Hello Darts Nuts, I'm going to do a review of something quite different here. Um, this is a, a dart board obviously, but it's not a, a normal dart board. This is a what you could call a game really, it's um, called Dart Smart Cricket. And as you can see in the box, the board is shaped like a cricket pitch. And it, it's just like a new kind of a game that you can play using dart, so it's not to replace darts or anything but it's something quite interesting and fun to play especially if you're into cricket and um, really you don't need to have any skill at darts anyone could play this kids family you can have from uh, a one-on-one -on -one game or you can have teams of up to two or eleven players just like you can in real cricket and as it says on the box you can take wickets be caught bowled or run out you score singles, twos, threes, fours or sixes and as it says on the box it's made from high quality Brazilian sisal so it, it's just like a normal board and on the back of the box it's got all the instructions on how to play obviously I'm not going to go into all that now but uh, when I put the board up I'll try and explain how the game works as briefly as possible inside the box you get two darts one is the Button and one is the ball and dart. You get 11 pins to represent the fielders, and obviously, you get your bracket for fixing it to the board. Right, here's the board, and it's just the same as a same size as a normal dart board, but obviously, it's got this like pitch design printed onto the board. There's no wires on the board and that's to prevent um, bounce outs, to lessen the bounce outs. And this board is an Australian um, invention and as you can see it's got the website on there dartsmartcricket.com so at present you can only buy it from Australia and um, the board itself is 75 Australian dollars which is about 44 pound but if you want it shipping to the UK um, they've got a variety of different uh, delivery options but obviously it's quite expensive to have it delivered uh, the cheapest option is by economy C which is £36 and then it gets increasingly more expensive for the uh, faster better services but um, also I had to pay £31 I think it was import tax but the uh, people who make this board are really concentrating on the Australian market at present so if it takes off it will probably get uh, into UK shops and then obviously you you won't have to pay them higher costs but uh, because I've seen this board and I'm, I was always a big fan of cricket I was really interested to try it so that was the reason why I've got one and I thought it looked pretty uh, cool looking the way it was designed and I thought well yeah something different um, obviously you play darts all the time with other people and that and if you're playing teams or even just for fun I thought this is something that you can do differently and still enjoy the same concept of throwing a dart but in a different way so what I'm going to do now is set the board up and I'll try as briefly as possible to explain how the game works. Right then, I've got the board set up so I'll just try to briefly explain how the game works. First of all, I'll explain what some of the markings on the board are. The board is made up of four player zones which are these pizza slices. So that's player zone 1, player zone 2, 3 and 4 and the center of the board is the pitch you've got the batter's wicket which is the little square at the top the mid pitch and the bowler's wicket and the three circles around it are the bowler's zone and all these little squares here they're called the fielder zones that's where the bowler can place their fielders and the rings going around are the batter's running run zone so this is where the batter can score so that's one run two three four and six so 
Once you've uh, decided how many players are, are playing the game, you can have uh, one against one or however many up to 11 aside. Then what you do then is decide on the number of overs and the number of innings. Um, 20 overs is recommended. And if you go on the uh, Dartsmart website, there's a score sheet what you can download to keep track of the scores. And what I'll do is I'll just play a one over match just so you can get an idea of how the game works. Um, so the bowler throws his dart first, he has six darts per over, as in cricket there's six balls per over. The bowler throws his dart and then the batter throws their dart. So the, 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 what the bowler is trying to do is he's trying to throw his dart in the bowler's zone which includes the pitch and the three rings around it. This determines how what the batter does next. Uh, so the bowler will try and uh, dictate what the uh, batter can score. So these coloured segments represent how many runs the batsman can score. So you've got like one run, one to three runs, uh, one to two runs, and the green ones are uh, one, two, three, four, or six runs. So depending on where the bats, uh, where the bowler throws his dart, if he throws it in the uh, green section there, that means the batsman can score in any of them run zones, but it has to be within the same play zone as where the bowler's dart lands. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually quite easy when you when you see how it all works. So let's say the bowler throws his dart and he he throws it in. Um, let's say for argument's sake, he throws it in this here. Now that is a one to two run segment. So that means the batsman can either score one or two runs. Um, it has to be thrown in the same play zone so what he'll do is he'll either throw his dart anywhere in the one run zone or anywhere in the two run zone but if I have a fielder in any of them zones where the dart lands then the batsman will be classed as caught out if the batsman throws his dart here or anywhere else it will be classed as no score so if the bowler is bowling the dart, throwing the dart, and he throws the dart outside of that area, say he throws his dart over here, or he throws his dart there and it falls out, that is counted as a no ball. So what happens then is the batter can throw his dart anywhere on the board, and even if it lands in a fielder pin, he can't be given out, and he can still score whatever his dart lands on. Before every throw of the dart, the bowler can change the position of his fielders. He can only have a maximum of four in each play zone, but he has to have at least one fielder in each play zone. If the bowler throws his dart and it lands in the mid pitch, that means the batter can throw his dart anywhere on the board to make a score. If the bowler throws his dart and it lands in the batter's wicket, then the batter has to throw his dart anywhere on the pitch to represent a blocked shot. If his dart doesn't hit anywhere on the pitch, it can either be the batter's wicket, the mid pitch or the bowler's wicket, and then he's classed as being out. If the bowler throws his dart into the bowler's wicket, which is here, then that means the batter has to throw his dart in um, a one run zone so it can be any one run zone around here so that means if he does that then he's not run out if he doesn't get his dart in any of these then his cluster's run out if the bowler throws his dart and it lands outside of the bowler zone or even if it hits the bowler zone and drops out it is classed as um, a no ball then that means the batter can throw his dart anywhere on the board and score any runs 
even if it lands in a, in a fielder zone where there's a fielder pin he can still score runs and he can't be given out. If the batter throws his dart and he's attempting like a two run or whatever let's say he throws his dart there and there's a fielder pin if the dart hits it the batter is classed as being out but if his dart falls out the board or hits the pin or whatever and it falls out it is considered a dropped catch so the batter won't be out. If a dart lands partially on a black line but it's still touching a segment then it's classed as being in the segment that it's touching but if the dart lands fully on the dividing line then it's up to the player who threw the dart to determine which segment it's in. If you're playing more than one player each side the bowler bowls six darts and the batter faces six darts to complete one over. If a batter is out the next player finishes that over and then they finish the next over. So in other words if, if you're a batter and you're in bat and the bowler takes your wicket then the next player comes in he finishes that over and he also completes the next over that the bowler throws but then after that the next player takes over until all the overs are completed when all the overs are completed then whoever's got the most points is the winner simple as that really so what I'll, I'll attempt to do then is I'll attempt to play a one over match just against myself so I'll be playing batter and bowler so I'm just going to use the darts that come with it you could use your own darts I suppose but just for the sake of this I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the red dart as the bowler's dart and the black dart as the batter's dart so first of all as I'm the bowler I'm going to set my field up so I'm going to place the pins around the board and after you've done that you can still change the position before each dart is thrown but um, you can't change it while the batters have an ease throw you've got to do it before you have your throw and the rules say that you've got to have at least one pin in each play zone so for now I'm just going to set them up as best as I know obviously the way the game works is you'll need to know your opponent's strengths and weaknesses so if they're quite weak on a particular side of the board then you will attempt to make it so that they throw that side of the board and place your fielders there in the hope of um, catching them out and obviously the skill comes into the game in trying to get these very small segments so but like I say it's a game that anyone can play now remember you can't put these in the 6 run zone, you can only put them in the 1, 2, 3 and 4 run zone. So I've got 3 on there so I'll make that 4 and I'll put 4 on this one. So I know myself that I'm quite weak on this side of the board so that's why I've put more fielders down there so I'm playing against myself here. But what I'm going to do now then is um, did I say that one for the bowler? I think I did. Red for the bowler. So I'm going to throw the first dart, which will be the first ball, and I have to throw it around here. No my luck, I'll miss the board completely. Right, so what's happened there is I've thrown the bowler's dart into the mid pitch. That means the batter can score anywhere around the board. So I'm just going to throw the batter's dart now. So that's in the two run zone so that means I'll mark two down on the stuck score sheet. And that's the first ball of the first over so the bowler has his second ball now. Looking at the sheet with the graphics on which tells you the scores and that is the one run zone 
So now the batter has to score one run and he has to score it on there. If he lands anywhere else it doesn't count. Oh. So that's the second ball of the first over and the batter has scored two. So now the third ball from the bowler. So I've landed in there. Actually I've landed on the dividing line there but it looks as if it's in that segment so it's the one and two run zone so the batsman can throw his dart in either that one or that one but if he throws it in there then he'll be out caught and missed again so so far the batter's only scored two points two runs so now the fourth ball of the first over. So that's on the green segment which means the batter can score from one to six runs and um, that's any of these right up to the end. So now this is where strategy can come in. Say if you strategy and skill if you're coming towards maybe the end of the game and Maybe if you need a high score of six runs, then you might want to attempt that because you may not get another chance to score so many runs. So if you're very skillful, you might get your dart in that thin six run zone. Um, but obviously, it's only um, early days yet, and I don't know what the outcome of the match is going to be, so I'm just going to throw it anywhere. In that that play zone, score any run. Oh, and now the batter has landed into a fielder's pin there, so the batter is out. Or oh, he's lost a wicket. If there's only one player playing each side, then that means he's lost wicket. If he loses eleven wickets, uh, ten wickets, then that's game over. But if I was playing more than one player, then the next person would start and they would finish the rest of this over. It's only one more ball to go. Right, on that last ball there, the ball had missed the bowler zone, so that's counted as a no ball. So that means the batsman can score anywhere on the board, even if he lands where a pin is, he can't be given out. So that's two runs scored, so that means the batsman on the, the batting team is now four runs. I think that's what I was right. I'm lost now with how many runs I had. <laughs> I haven't been writing it down. But anyway, that was the end of the over. So now, obviously the teams will switch over. So what was the bowler is now the batter. So the batting team is now going to bowl. I'm going to move the pins around, don't really need to but I'm going to move them in any case. So now I've switched sides, the batter is now the bowler so first ball coming up. And that's in the one to two run segment so again it's in this play zone so I have to score one or two runs and I have to be careful because he's got three fielders there. Ah, miles away. A bit too cautious. So that's one ball of the second innings. And again I've missed the bowler's zone, so that's counted as a no ball, so the batter can score anywhere he likes. So that's two runs. That's in the one to two run zone again. Didn't make a score there because I missed the two zones. Now as a batter I didn't really want to do that so I've given him the opportunity to score in any of them zones, any of them run zones. 
in this play zone and because I've only played one over just as a test I only need to score two more runs and I've, I've won ah, and that's typical of that so that's that batter out so fifth ball and that looks like it's on the line so as the uh, bowler I can determine which it's going to be in so I don't want it to be in there because that means the uh, the batter can score any of them so I'm going to say it's going to be the uh, the one run zone so he has to score on here and he does so he gets one run but that's really just a, a very shortened way of how the game works obviously it's not going to make a whole lot of exciting watching on the review because you've got to really understand how it works and play it to get an idea but that's just to give you a taster of what it's about now like I said the strategy comes in the skill of the players and also how they determine uh, where to throw the dart and how to set the field but I think it could be a really fun game um, the elements of cricket in there which is something a lot of people are like and like I said even if you don't like darts or even if you don't like cricket it still could be a really fun game and depending on how you look at it you could look at it at a challenge of skill as well I mean it, getting your darts in these little squares here especially for the yeah, batter's wicket I'm sure some players are capable of doing that and if you've got somebody in your team who's really good at that then who knows what's going to happen but um, yeah I think it's a good idea it just brings a different element it's not really meant to overtake darts or meant to be a replacement for darts it's just another fun with darts and with dart boards and something anyone can play you don't even have to be great at throwing a dart you can still have a lot of fun with it I think it's uh, really good but like I said it, it's too expensive to order from the UK to get it from Australia so hopefully it'll come out and be in the retail shops over here and hopefully people start getting into it I can imagine um, it being good for people who are actually playing cricket matches when the matches are rained off and uh, having a um, a proper 11 a side match in the uh, in the clubhouse while they're waiting for the rain to, to ease off and like I said you can set up any amount of overs from even like 5 to 20 overs or more if you want so you can have quick games or long games uh, I think it should be really good so that's the end of the review thanks for watching